Hey everybody, welcome back to the Words of Life Daily Bible Reading. We've reached day 214. We'll be reading Psalm 60, 61, and 62, along with Acts chapter 22 today. Let's dive right in. Psalm 60, to the choir master, according to Shushan Eduth, Imiktam of David, for instruction when he strove with Aram Naharaim and with Aram Zobah, and when Joab on his return struck down twelve thousand of Edom in the Valley of Salt. O God, you have rejected us, broken our defenses. You have been angry. O restore us. You have made the land to quake. You have torn it open. Repair its breaches, for it totters. You have made your people see hard things. You have given us wine to drink that made us stagger. You have set up a banner for those who fear you, that they may flee to it from the bow. Silah. That your beloved ones may be delivered, give salvation by your right hand, and answer us. God has spoken in his holiness. With exultation I will divide up Shechem and portion out the vale of Succoth. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah is my scepter, Moab is my wash basin, upon Edom I cast my shoe, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Have you not rejected us, O God? You do not go forth, O God, with our armies. O oh, grant us help against the foe, for vain is the salvation of man. With God we shall do valiantly, it is he who will tread down our foes. Psalm 61, to the choir master with stringed instruments, of David. Hear my cry, O God, listen to my prayer. From the end of the earth I call to you when my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. Silah. For you, O God, have heard my vows, you have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king, may his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God, appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So will I ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. Psalm 62 to the choir master, according to Jejuthun, a psalm of David. For God alone my soul waits in silence, from him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress, I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will all of you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position, they take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. Silah. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge, is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, Silah. Those of low estate are but a breath, those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no trust in extortion, set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God, and that you, O Lord, belong steadfast love, for you will render to, to a man according to his work. The Book of Acts, Chapter 22 Brothers and fathers, hear the defense that I now make before you. And when they heard that he was addressing them in the Hebrew language, they became even more quiet, and he said, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in this city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel according to the strict manner of the law of our fathers, being zealous for God as all of you are this day. I persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering to prison both men and women, 
as the high priest and the whole council of elders can bear me witness. From them I received letters to the brothers, and I journeyed toward Damascus to take those also who were there and bring them in bonds to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was on my way and drew near to Damascus, about noon a great light from heaven suddenly shone around me, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And I answered, Who are you, Lord? And he said to me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. Now those who were with me saw the light, but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said to me, Rise, and go into Damascus, and there you will be told all that is appointed for you to do. And since I could not see because of the brightness of that light, I was led by the hand by those who were with me, and came into Damascus. And one, Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me, and standing by me said to me, Brother Saul, receive your sight. And at that very hour I received my sight and saw him. And he said, The God of our fathers appointed you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear a voice from his mouth. For you will be a witness for him to every one of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptized, and wash away your sins, calling on his name. When I had returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance, and saw him saying to me, Make haste and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in one synagogue after another I am imprisoned and beat those who believed in you. And when the blood of Stephen, your witness, was being shed, I myself was standing by and approving and watching over the garments of those who killed him. And he said to me, Go, for I will send you far away to the Gentiles. Up to this word they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks, saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out why they were shouting against him like this. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, Is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? When the centurion heard this, he went to the tribune and said to him, What are you about to do, for this man is a Roman citizen? So the tribune came and said to him, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, Yes. The tribune answered, I bought the citizenship for a large sum, Paul said, but I am a citizen by birth. So those who were about to examine him withdrew from him immediately, and the tribune also was afraid, for he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen, and that he had bound him. But on the next day, desiring to know the real reason why he was being accused by the Jews, he unbound him and commanded the chief priests and all the council to meet, and he brought Paul down and set him before them. All right, that wraps up reading for today, everybody. Thanks so much again for tuning in and listening and reading along with me in God's Word. I was excited that we didn't have to wait another day to hear what Paul had to say as we were left with a little bit of a cliffhanger yesterday. His defense is always um, very, very powerful, and we can learn a lot from the things that he said as we go out into the world and confront the evils of today and possibly, uh, you know, attract that level of, of, uh, of criticism and persecution. So be strong out there. May I carry God's word with you in your heart everywhere. And don't be afraid to speak the good news about Jesus. Talk to you later. See you tomorrow.